see the grisly, macabre marathon of fright and learn your fate. Will it be life or living death? <laughs> Welcome back to Matt's Movie Nights, where I recommend movies and then we talk about them. So, uh, last time it was uh, Frankenstein, Universal Frankenstein triple feature. Um, of course, starting with the original, Boris Karloff's Frankenstein, which is one of my favorite Universal monster movies. I mean, how can you beat it? It's, it's, the, it's the classic. It's Frankenstein. Everyone knows Frankenstein. Everyone loves Frankenstein. Uh, one, one of the original monster movies came out uh, the same year as Dracula. And it was... Those two movies were sort of the... Earliest American horror films. Frankenstein, the story of Henry... You guys know the story of Frankenstein. Do I have to go over the plot? Henry Frankenstein thinks he can build a body and bring life to it out of parts from uh, dead dead people, sewn dead people's bodies together to create life, to create a body which he can give life to. And uh, a mishap occurs where instead of putting a human brain into the creature, he puts the brain of a psychotic killer into the monster. So the monster goes around killing people, and then the village revolts against Dr. Frankenstein and his creature. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tale as old as time. Well, tale as old as, like, the late 1800s. When did Frankenstein come out? Actually, that might have been the 1700s. Let's ask Google... 1818, so very early 1800s. So yeah, and this is this is sort of the defining telling of Frankenstein. Um, partially because it's the earliest, but also, like, of all the Frankenstein adaptations I've seen, this is the best. Like, it's it's not even really close. There There's, like, three other Frankenstein movies... I might recommend, and will recommend, one of them's coming up tonight. No spoilers. They had Lon Chaney play him in a couple of the sequels, and they had Bella Lugosi play him in one of the sequels. And it's like, you can tell it's not Boris Karloff. Like, it, you, can't, you can't replace Boris. He, he is the monster. That said, I think not enough credit goes to... Colin Clive, who plays Dr. Frankenstein, and he is just pitch perfect. He nails it. This is Frankenstein. That's Dr. Frankenstein, you know? He's he's eccentric. He's he seems a little crazy, but there's he's grounded enough that it's not like, oh, this is a complete madman. This is it's it's a guy who thinks he's on to something, and he'll stop at nothing to prove that he's on to something. Uh, he does do the cliche of, like, oh, well, we'll see how crazy I am. Or, uh, if, if you say, we'll, we'll see how crazy I am, or, or we'll see who's crazy, see who the crazy one is here, it's you. It's no sane person is like, oh, well, we'll see how crazy I am. It's like, you might be right. But you're still fucking crazy. I had a bit of a Leonardo DiCaprio pointing at the TV screen moment watching this. Because, like, the music starts and I'm like, Wait, that's the music from my Igor video. And I'm like, oh yeah, that I, I, used, Frank, I used the music from Frankenstein for that video. Like, fucking duh, Matt, this is where you got the music. But that's just... That's where I'm used to hearing that music, because, like, I watch that video all the time. That's genuinely, where did Igor come from? I think it's my best video, honestly. Like, nah. Like, like there's other there's other videos I've made that I'm like, eh, that one's pretty good, but I, I don't think any of them are as good as the Igor video. I really like the Igor video. 
Where did Igor come from? Card to it right there. Because, of course, Igor is not in this film. We have Fritz. And, my god, I didn't realize it till this watch through, but Fritz is a dumb bitch. <laughs> He's like, my god, this man is stupid. Um... Because, like, he's sneaking in to, like, get the brain, and he bumps into a skeleton, and he freaks out and thinks it's, like, a person. It's like, Fritz, you... It's, it's a skeleton. It's not even a real skeleton. It's one of those, like, plastic skeletons that hang in science classrooms. And then, and then of course, infamously, you know, he grabs the brain and drops it, and then he's just like, uh... Fuck it. And he grabs, like... The psychotic brain, which I mean, I can't. I can't even be that upset at him for that. That seems like some shit I might pull. Like, like the brain I needed to get has been destroyed. And I'm just like, oh, there's another brain right there. Shh! Don't tell Doctor Frankenstein. Um, really good movie. Really atmospheric. I I think it honestly manages some, like some level of creepiness, some scares, despite being from, like, the early 30s. And a lot of, a lot of horror movies from around this time. Like, I love them. I love them to death. But a lot of monster movies from around this time are just, like, kind of cheesy and not very scary. But I, I think, I think this one works. I think Frankenstein, uh... But the Doctor, Doctor Frankenstein, and the monster are both quite scary in this film. Um, I I do remember vividly as a kid. I something about the Frankenstein monster was just very unsettling to me. So whenever it popped up in media, kind of like hmm, not not like a full on fear, more of a like I don't want that thing coming near me. It wasn't like like. Ventriloquist dummies, I've, I've spoken about this before. Ventriloquist dummies, I look at them and I'm like, ooh, fuck. No, oh, that's, oh, that's so creepy. The Frankenstein monster, I'm like, as long as he stays away from me. Like, this, this, back up, buddy. I don't want to be around this person. There's a, there's one really weird scene, because of course, I kind of didn't mention this. Uh, Frankenstein is engaged to be married. Uh, his, his wife... Or his fiance, I suppose, lives like down in the village, and he's up in like this castle doing his lab work, and his father's all upset at him for doing lab work instead of like worrying about the wedding. So you know, after he creates the monster, he like comes back down and it's like, "All right, come on, let's plan the wedding." And <laughs> there's this really weird scene where they all. They gather to, like, celebrate the engagement. I guess it's like a bachelor party or something. Like, the the mid, like, early 18th century, 19th century version of uh, a bachelor party. And, uh, you know, Dr. Frankenstein's father, Mr. Frankenstein, I suppose... He, he, like, gets this super fancy wine out and, like, pours everyone some, like, fancy wine. And then he, like, tells the butler, like, Oh, uh, uh give the help champagne. They they wouldn't enjoy this wine. This, this wine's too fancy for the help. Just give them champagne. Which, like, rude. But then, like, he, he brings out this tray of, like, champagne. Like, like, he already had a tray of champagne glasses. And they all walk up and, like, take a sip out of the glass and then put it back on the tray and leave. And it's like, you had a whole glass of champagne? Why would you take one sip out of a glass of champagne and then walk away? Must have been really shit champagne. You know? But they, they gotta pretend, like, like they take the sip and it's like, oh, this is some, like, god-awful champagne. But they gotta be like, Mmm, what a great one, Mr. Frankenstein. Gotta go do my work. Uh, also, in that scene, uh, they say the names of two future Frankenstein movies. Uh, House of Frankenstein, one of the official Universal sequels. And then they're all like, ah, cheers to the young Frankenstein. I'm like, ah, ah, because that's the Mel Brooks movie. Ha <laughs> ha. Maybe that's where they got the title 
for young Frankenstein? Because honestly, G Gene Wilder seems older than Frankenstein in this movie. I can't guarantee that, but like Frankenstein in this movie, pretty young looking, and you see Gene Wilder and uh, young Frankenstein. He's kind of got the wild hair and the mustache, and it's black and white, so it's hard to tell like how gray he is on top. But he definitely seems older than Frankenstein in this movie. Maybe that's where they got the title. I don't know. Yeah. Frankenstein, Boris Karloff's Frankenstein. He does it. He he gets. He's credited at the end. They show the credits at the end, and he's credited. But at the beginning, it's question mark as the monster to like up the creepy factor. Ooh, who plays him? So mysterious. Boris Karloff. He became like a pretty big star off of this movie, um, directed by James Whale, who was another regular with, uh, Universal Horror, probably because of the success of Frankenstein, uh, but he did, he did The Old Dark House and The Invisible Man as well, which are both excellent movies. So yeah, Frankenstein, uh, the classic, why haven't you seen Frankenstein? Watch Frankenstein. <laughs> Although, if there were a movie I'd really stress, you need to watch. The next movie we watched was Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, last time I asked what your favorite Universal Monster movie was... Spoilers. Mine's Bride of Frankenstein. I love Bride of Frankenstein. It's, it's the best of all these Universal Monster movies. Which is weird, because it's a sequel. But it's... I, I like it so much more than Frankenstein. Honestly. Like, Frankenstein, there's, like, hints that, like, the monster is a little more human. That, that you know, maybe we should empathize with him a little bit. Bride of Frankenstein, he's, like, he's not even the villain. He's, he, the monster is the main character of Bride of Frankenstein. It's about him. It's, it's his sympathetic journey. Like, oh, God... The horrors of being a monster in the real world, you know? Like, the, 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 the horrors of being perceived as a monster. Um, just very, it's very deep, a very, a, a very relatable story, you know? Like, outsider, outcast, no one likes him, and looked down upon by society, which is... Probably why so many, like, horror fans are also just, like, weird outsider people. It's stuff like this. It's moments like Bride of Frankenstein where it's like, yeah, this is what it's like to be, you know, a weirdo, to be outcast by society. Bride of Frankenstein gets it. I, I fucking love Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, basically, in Bride of Frankenstein, uh... The monster survives the windmill burning at the end of the first movie, and he he goes off sort of on his own. But everywhere he goes, he runs into trouble because everyone recognizes him as the monster, as as Frankenstein's monster, and he so so he tries to like help people, but they're like, "Oh no, it's the monster!" and they they scream and run and. He finally, he, he finds, like, this shack in the woods with a blind man, and he becomes friends with the blind man, but two other hunters happen upon the cabin, and they're like, Oh my god, it's the monster! Oh, we've gotta kill it! And so he, he runs off back to the village, back to Dr. Frankenstein, and... Meanwhile, Dr. Frankenstein has been goaded into making... A, a female version of the creature by this, uh, like, I don't know, fellow mad scientist. He's sort of the main villain of this movie. Um, but he, he has built a, a body similar to the one Dr. Frankenstein built to, that was the creature, but his is a more feminine body. And I think also like completely artificial, 
like not made out of human body parts. I might have gotten that part wrong, but I'm pretty sure he he built like his own synthetic human body, and then he's like, with with your knowledge, Doctor Frankenstein, I can give it life. That's uh, that's how the bride gets created, but then uh, the bride rejects the monster and. So she and Dr. Frankenstein run off and, and the monster burns down the laboratory with with the other mad scientist in it. And that's that's another like, like one of my favorite scenes is like when everyone's escaping from like the burning building and then he, he grabs like the one scientist. He's like, no, you die with me. I'm like, ooh, this is good. I really like this movie. This is this is my favorite Universal monster movie. One of my favorite movies, like period. Um, it's it's got a good sense of humor about it too. Like it's it's creepy. It's sympathetic to the monster. It's got a good sense of humor. This is like I, I feel like this is one of the first movies to really get the idea of comedy in horror films like horror films typically need a touch of comedy to go down right and then this movie gets that this movie definitely has its, its funnier moments i wouldn't call it a straight-up comedy but it, it's much funnier than a lot of the other universal monster movies on purpose i should say there are some that are pretty funny not on purpose yeah man i love it i love bride of frankenstein like i <laughs> I can't express this is this is genuinely one of my favorite movies. Like way up there, way way up there for me. If you have not seen Bride of Frankenstein, I'm begging you watch Bride of Frankenstein. I would recommend Frankenstein first. Like if you're going to watch one, watch both. Um neither of them are that long. They're like an hour 10 each. This was the shortest movie night I've had so far by like Almost an hour. Because <laughs> cause Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein are both like an hour and ten. And then the last one was like just under an hour twenty. So this was far and away my shortest movie night. And last week was pretty short too. So yeah, uh, watch the first two Frankenstein movies. Big, big fan. Do not watch the sequels. Um... I've I've seen Son of Frankenstein and Ghost of Frankenstein. Trust me, it's not worth it. They're not good. That said, our final movie of the evening was technically a Frankenstein sequel. It's Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, which is in both of these box sets. Also, weirdly, uh, Wolfman, it's it's Wolfman, Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. Werewolf of London, She-Wolf of London, but then it's got House of Frankenstein and House of Dracula as well, which I'm like, okay, those are movies the Wolfman appeared in, but you know, it's like the complete Legacy Collection. I already have Legacy Collections for Frankenstein and Dracula. It, it just seems like they're padding out the box set, so... Yeah, I've got duplicate copies of a couple movies, because I have all of... The Legacy Collection. Well, ooh, I'm, I do not have the Legacy Collection of The Invisible Man. Because all of the Invisible Man sequels suck. But I have all of the other. All of the other Legacy Collections. Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Uh, it's a kind of an odd film because it's, it's the first sequel to Wolfman. And usually the first sequel of these Universal Monster movies is pretty good. Um, like I, I just said, Bride of Frankenstein, it's my favorite of the Universal Monster movies. Uh, Dracula's, Dracula's Daughter is the first sequel. I really like Dracula's Daughter. Um, Invisible Man Returns sucks, but... And there was never a sequel to The Mummy, was there? Hmm. Uh, Wolfman, the, the, as a Wolfman sequel... It really works, but it's like the sixth or seventh movie in the Frankenstein series. <laughs> so it's it's actually not a very good Frankenstein movie. 
But that's okay. The main focus is on the Wolfman, even though he gets second billing. The main focus is the Wolfman. It's it's Talbot. Uh, I, I should say, I have been informed the polite word for gypsies is Roma. So, apologies to any of my Romanian viewers. Uh, I have to have some Romanian viewers, right? Hit thumbs up if you're Romanian. My apologies for, for Gypsy. We will use Roma from now on. So, in Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, Robert Talbot finds the Roma from the first movie and um, sort of asks, her like, oh, how do I get rid of this curse? I don't want to be the Wolfman anymore. In fact, it starts with him dead in his tomb, wrapped in wolf's bane. But these grave robbers come in and sort of free him from the wolf's bane, which brings him back to life, because they never killed him in the first movie. So he, he goes and finds this Roma from the first film and asks her, like, oh, how do I... how do I stop being a, a werewolf? I, I want to get rid of the wolf curse. And she's like, well, I, I don't know how to get rid of the curse, but uh, I, I do know a man who might be able to help. Dr. Frankenstein. Which I think is actually a pretty good way to set up uh, a crossover movie like this. You know? <laughs> it's, it's consistent with the Wolfman's goals to go find Dr. Frankenstein. I'm not really sure how Dr. Frankenstein's gonna cure him of being a werewolf, but... Whatever, this this lady says he can, so they're gonna go see Dr. Frankenstein. But of course, Dr. Frankenstein's dead, as are both of his sons, because this takes place after Son and House of Frankenstein. Um, but he he's searching through the rubble of Dr. Frankenstein's, like, lab equipment and stuff, trying to find... Uh, like, his notes or something, something that could help him. And he finds the monster frozen in ice. And he, he frees the monster to try to, like, help him find Frankenstein's research. And he, he does find, he finds Frankenstein's... daughter-in-law? I, I think it's his daughter-in-law that he finds. Maybe just his actual daughter but that means Frankenstein had a lot of kids for when he died. <laughs> As she has this other guy she knows who's also like a doctor, and he's trying to replicate some of Frankenstein's experiments to s see how he can help the Wolfman, and and it all goes bad because he he also he's gonna like destroy the Wolfman and the monster because like Frankenstein's monsters out there roaming around. Can't have that happening again. So he's like, oh, we, we gotta destroy the wolfman and the monster. And at the last minute, he's like, I can't do it. I can't destroy the monster. And then there's a big fight scene between Frankenstein and the wolfman. And it's really good. It's, it's a satisfying payoff, which is rare for these types of team-up movies. They, they have a fight, and it actually works. Um, it probably helps that this is called... Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, and not Frankenstein versus the Wolfman. Frankenstein versus the Wolfman, I'd be like, come on, you know, there gotta be more fighting in this if it's a versus movie. But it's not a versus, it's a meets. They just meet each other. The fight is just a nice bonus. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this one pretty well. Mostly because it focuses on the Wolfman and not Frankenstein. Uh, the the Frankenstein bits are kind of odd, and it's it's Bella Lugosi is the monster, and it's like he's not as good. He's he's not Boris Karloff. It's actually kind of a weird cycle Universal went through with like their stars putting them as Frankenstein. It starts with Karloff, and then Karloff leaves the series, so they replace him with Lon Chaney Jr. But Lon Chaney Jr. is the Wolfman, so they need someone else to play him for Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. So they're just like, ah, get Bela Lugosi to play him. Which is kind of consistent with the end of House of Frankenstein. 
because uh, Bela Lugosi plays Igor with a Y in that series, and at the end of House of Frankenstein, he gets his brain put into the creature, so it works, technically. He, he was technically the creature at the end of House of Frankenstein, so Bela Lugosi could just keep being the creature, and, and we can get... Uh, Lon Chaney to to be the Wolf Man. Yeah, it's it's a fun little team up movie, like that with a Wolf Man getting to meet Frankenstein and then fighting Frankenstein, or the monster. I should say the monster. If we want to be pedantic here, I, I don't have that much to say other than that. It's just fun. It's it's not smart. It's not it's not on par with like. Either of the first two Frankenstein movies, for sure. Not really with the Wolfman. It's just like, hey, you like Frankenstein? You like the Wolfman? You want to see him do stuff together? Here you go. It's fun. I am I am apprehensive about recommending any of the other Universal Monster sequels because they are all so terrible. I actually tried watching all of them once, and I quit because so many of them are just so uninteresting. Um, also at the time I was watching them through, like, library DVDs, and I'm just, and they, they were all due back at the library, and I'm like, I don't want to watch the rest. These can all go back. But, uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, I, there, I have seen recommendations for, I have seen people talk positively about this one, so I'm like, alright, I will apprehensively recommend Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, and it didn't disappoint. Uh, I am not recommending any of the other sequels because they're almost guaranteed to disappoint. Uh, sequels I haven't seen, I should say. If I've seen the sequel, we might just throw it out there, but this is probably the only Universal Monster sequel I'm going to recommend without having seen it first. Yeah, Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. I like it. So last week I asked, what's your favorite Universal Monster movie? Obviously, I just said mine was Bride of Frankenstein. I love Bride of Frankenstein so much. Um, the only answer I really got was from uh, Henry Koslick, who tells this very nice story about getting to stay up late to see a double feature of uh, Frankenstein and Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Uh, it was the first time... So he says, the first night I was ever up past midnight deliberately remains my favorite universal property. See, so yeah, you got to stay up one Saturday night and watch uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein and Frankenstein. I do really like the Abbott and Costello uh, universal monster movies. We could see those down the pipeline. Maybe. That's, that's a maybe. Of course, uh, a universal is not the only one with claim to, to, you know, classic monster movies. There is, of course, Hammer Horror. So tonight my question for you is, what's your favorite Hammer Horror movie? Very similar question, just a different studio. What's your favorite Hammer Horror movie? We're going to start here with Curse of Frankenstein, keeping the Frankenstein stuff going. Curse of Frankenstein. And then... The other two are both in this box set. We're going to watch its sequel, Evils of Frankenstein, and of course, Curse of the Werewolf, uh, the only werewolf movie Hammer ever made. So uh, th those are my Hammer Horror recommendations for tonight. That's our, our Hammer Horror triple feature. Um, and until next time, have a nice day.